Thank you, Anand. Uh, thank you for giving uh, such a nice introduction, and uh, thank you, everyone, to all the panelists and you know all the audience who are here. Uh, I'm, I would say, very glad to be moderating this session. However, what I can see is, you know, we have our industry experts and you know quite experienced people who would know more than me. So that's why I decided to moderate this session. And uh, it would be a tough job, but I'll try to, you know, manage the expectation of the panelists and the crowds accordingly. Uh, thank you, Anand, and thank you, EQ team, for organizing such a great event. I would, you know, love, uh, would start the event by, you know, asking all the panelists to introduce themselves first. And before they do that, I'll introduce myself. I'm Alok, and I take care of business development in UAE for M Plus Solar by Petronas. Uh, we are p uh, part of Petronas Group, which has developed around 1.2 gigawatts of distributed solar projects across four countries. And uh, we are present in Malaysia, Vietnam, India, and UAE now. It's been a while that uh, we have been in UAE, and you know we have developed uh, quite good number of projects. And now I would take the opportunity for all the panelists to please introduce themselves, and then we can take uh, this session forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. So my name is Karim Megarbi. I'm the, the founder and executive director of Horizon Invest. Horizon Invest is a project origination platform. Uh, we are focusing on um, solar and wind in Asia, Central Asia, Southeast Asia, a bit of Europe and Africa. So what we do is we source projects for selected investors, and last year we closed um, 200 uh, megawatts in five different countries, and I'm very glad to be here today. Thank you. Hi, this is Manish Chaudhary. I'm part of AMIA Power Project Finance Team. AMIA Power is uh, one of the biggest de developers in African region. We are also present in Asia, Central Asia, I would say, Middle East. We have 200 megawatts of capacity in operations and 3 gigawatt in pipeline. We expect to grow at very fast pace over the next few years. Thank you. Okay, my name is uh, Romain Rich. So um, I'm, um, I'm working for EDF Renewable, leading the uh, operation, maintenance, asset management of, uh, of the renewable asset of EDF Group. So a global leader in... Uh, uh, production of electricity without CO2 emissions. Uh, as well, here today, I'm, uh, I'm representing MESIA, uh, Middle East Solar Industry Association, uh, where I'm an uh, international uh, business director. So MESIA, as uh, maybe I hope so, some of you know, uh, is, uh, is uh, the leading nonprofit organization that uh, its core goal is to promote the, the development of the solar energy across the MENA region. Uh, it has around 80 members uh, currently, a company of the sectors. And I will not go more in depth because I've got a presentation around to, to describe that. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Ashok Ramakrishna, working with uh, Siraj Power. I had the business development and have now been here for almost 10 years, prior to that almost two, three decades in India also, handling the off-grid and on-grid market. Siraj Power, we have sort of, you know, been able to pioneer the leasing concept here and now we have over a 100 megawatt portfolio in Dubai alone. We expect to increase on this and a pleasure being here with all of you. Good morning, everyone. I am Manish Singhal. I am currently heading digital transformation and carbon credits at Aquapower. Aquapower is uh, a leading developer, investor, and operator of uh, energy assets, water assets, and very soon hydrogen assets. And we have currently $70 billion of assets under our management and with a presence uh, in more than 13 countries. Pleasure being here. Good morning, everyone. My name is Antonio Valentin Diaz. I'm the head of Project Delivery, working for EDF uh, Renewables, uh, which is one of the most important developers in the regions, uh, with a pipeline uh, of PV and wind projects uh, under execution, and uh, both of them are under operation and maintenance uh, in the regions. Thank you. Thank you. 
Good morning, everybody. I'm Mustafa Taomi, uh, advisor and clean energy technology expert. I started uh, working in solar energy since the 19th, the early 19th, and I moved uh, in the MENA region. And I was in charge uh, uh, of MENA region uh, at uh, International Renewable Energy for six years. And uh, I shifted to the EU uh, with uh, 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 a project uh, in called uh, EUGCC Clean Energy Technology Network. Now uh, we ended this uh, this project and we are in the phase of launching a new uh, EUGCC uh, project with new objective integrating the EU Green Deal. And uh, here we are. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. This is Dinesh Xavier. Uh, I'm part of procurement team from Power China Huadong. Power China Huadong is a subsidiary company of Power China International. And we do EPC projects in the Middle East uh, region, uh, solar, wind, battery. And we also uh, like, uh, contribute to the water industry as well. Thank you. Thank you to all the panelists. And uh, to make this session interesting, I would also like to you know, welcome any questions or any point of discussion that you want to have this panel. You can actually share it with me. Uh, so that, you know, it, it can be a bit of an interactive session also. Uh, thank you, everyone, for the introductions again. So to start with, uh, what we understand is UAE has been a leader, you know, in developing and also envisaging these green energy projects across, I would say, in the world. You talk about solar, they have the biggest solar farm. You talk about, you know, green hydrogen, they are the one, I'm pretty sure they are the one who is going to have green hydrogen as first in the in the world but you know what i would like to understand from all the panelists uh, we can go one by one that what do you think of uae as you know one of the leaders in you know these renewable energy projects which they are but what are the key challenges that you also find in this region you know which which you see and which you feel that that are going to come or that are existing and how you plan to overcome these challenges if you can take it one by one. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, so we're we're not uh, really working in a, in the region as a as an origination platform because you know projects they are mostly tendered and they are very large projects. Um, however, what's interesting is that the the business model uh, in the, uh, of these countries actually will change. Uh, you know, the oil and gas uh, demand is supposed to, uh, supposed to uh, lower uh, decrease in the coming decades. And green hydrogen, for example, is a source of uh, potential revenue for these countries. So we see that. We're part also of DII, Desert Energy, where we advocate for both uh, green electron and green molecules. And what we see is that um, green hydrogen is very, very dynamic in the region. Uh, people see clearly that uh, uh, it's a new, it's a potential. Uh, by 2030, mostly, uh, that's the um, feedback that we have from the governments. Uh, and uh, you can see ongoing projects, uh, mostly in ammonia, uh, so mostly for transportation. Uh, transportation is then for large PV plants. Um, it's surprising that actually the. Uh, the size and the dynamic is a bit uh, slow because today there is no point to uh, burn gas to produce electricity. Uh, now the marginal cost uh, of CCGT uh, is clearly higher uh, than solar, so there is absolutely no point to continue. Uh, so hopefully, uh, I understand that from Saudi, Saudi uh, they targeted um, uh, 50%. Uh, they are accelerating. Dubai, I'm not sure actually uh, what's going on. Uh, but clearly, it would be interesting to see uh, at least 30% uh, very quickly uh, in the grid. I would like to tackle the challenges from financing aspect, basically. You see, what's happening is tariffs are going lower and lower. There is a pressure on the returns on all the developers. Logistic challenges are there in the market. EPC prices are going up. So I believe mixture of all this, how the developers are able to mitigate the risks in this market where it is so uncertain how things are going to happen in the future, this will be a biggest challenge and it will be key to see how the tariff structure evolves in the future. Because for the government, 
to keep on coming with the bids, tenders and all these things and for any other player, private players as well, there has to be enough benefit. Everybody likes to see lower tariff. But if you look at the interest rate, those are going up. So I believe those kind of challenges, the uncertainty in the market will be key in the future. But in the long run, I believe this, these things tend to smoothen out. So in the long term, the future is bright, but in short to medium term, we might see some hiccups. <clears throat> okay. Um, I think I will be, I will try to be optimistic. Uh, uh, there's challenge, uh, that's true, but uh, we have to see that, okay, in the region, there's favor fa favorable environment. Uh, you mentioned it, that uh, here in the region, it is blessed with, uh, for example, for solar power resources. Uh, we are in the region that has been and is still uh, heavily dependent on oil and gas, both as energy source and revenues. But leaders in, in this country uh, have defined very ambitious plan uh, through uh, net zero in Saudi in 2060, UAE 2050, uh, with targets uh, that are ambitious, and I think we have to be optimistic about that. Uh, that's true that since pandemic started, there has been more challenges. Uh, in the sector, we have been used to have a, a sharp declining trend over the last decade when it comes to costs. Now, it's not the it's not the same anymore. We, uh, we, we face some issue with, uh, with um, the price of raw material, logistics, and so on, the supply chain. Uh, but we have to look that this is near term. Uh, on the long term, there's expectation that the price should go down still, I think, up to 57% compared to the price of 2020 for PV uh, by 2050. So, uh, we have to see that cost-wise, we should go in the declining trends soon. Um, and of course, when you're not talking about cost, but technology, I think UAE is like, uh, like globally, uh, there are challenges and we need innovation when it comes to uh, storage for intermittency, uh, when it comes to uh, smart equipments to, uh, for planning for the grids and so on and so on. So, I see it very like uh, an optimistic way. Uh, there has been a change uh, lately since 2020, but uh, right now we have to see that with the, even with the geopolitical context, when the ex electricity uh, height uh, in gas, electricity in Europe, uh, still with the increase in costs in renewable, uh, it's significant absolute terms, but it's still more competitive than other energy. So I see it a uh, bright future so far. Hello, I'll try to give a distributed generation perspective, even though this is a utility scale panel. I consider that Dubai has been a success story as far as distributed generation. Huh? They've implemented the Shams program. We found that net metering is a durable policy. And now we have reached a stage where, you know, you have more than 300, 400 projects with almost 500 megawatt of distributed generation installed compared to, say, the 1,000 plus of utility scale. So definitely it has shown that uh, we can overcome challenges in 2015 when it started. And now I've built up where the momentum is good. There are some regulatory challenges, but I have a feeling that if this can be replicated across the region, you will have a durable policy, you know, which can accelerate the net zero transition. I'll share my perspective, one from my previous role, where I used to head the solar PV assets uh, portfolio at Aquapower. And one of the biggest challenge my fellow panelists just shared is the sheer disruptions in the supply chain. Most of us must have observed in our respective businesses. Last uh, eight to nine months uh, have created havoc for majority of the developers around the world, whether it's polysilicon price being three times than what it used to be earlier, or steel prices being more than two and a half times, or the logistic cost from China. But the good thing is all these disruptions, they, they have led all the policymakers think whether the over-reliance on one specific market is good or bad. I think that debate is already going on and some of the Middle Eastern nations have already kick-started uh, 
the policy framework of local manufacturing, which is a welcome step to manage these disruptions. Two, the clear challenge which has been observed is presence of competitive and competent EPC contractors. Most of the developers who are leading these big time investments, they need very credible EPC players who can be relied upon and who are very competitive as well. Because the point to bid and the point to execution, there is always a gap of one, one and a half year and a lot can change in between. So these two are the very clear examples of the challenges most of the developers, not just in this region, but globally they face. Coming to my new role, which I have just uh, taken over, and while I'm yet to face some of the larger challenges, but what I foresee, change management uh, is going to be one of the biggest challenge ahead, because when you are transforming a utility from a conventional to a digitally oriented organization, there's a lot of change that needs to be incul in inculcated into the minds of people. And on the cre carbon credit side, price discovery of the credit is the biggest pain and I'm very happy that uh, UAE, again as a leader, they have recently announced one of the largest regulated voluntary carbon, car carbon exchange markets, which is likely to take care of this challenge. Well, al although uh, it's clear that uh, there are challenges in the, in the near future, uh, I tend to be positive like my colleague Romain. Uh, I think we in the Middle East, we have uh, uh, very good developers, very good TPC contractors uh, from, from China, India, different, different countries. Uh, we have uh, suppliers, technical consultants. So I think we have, we have the capabilities, we have the knowledge to face these challenges. Uh, my colleagues uh, have been talking about the uh, uh, pricing increase in, in, in the markets which, uh, of course, uh, has, uh, has affected to, to the uh, solar market, but also all the, all the markets uh, uh, worldwide. So I think we are in a, in a very good position to uh, develop our solar projects in the region. What we need is, uh, I would say, uh, governments and of takers to understand what is the current situation in the market in, in terms of uh, pricing. Um, also, the lenders uh, need to, un to understand the situation, and I think uh, if we rely the responsibility on developers, CPC contractors, uh, I think we, we can get a good success in the region. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, regarding the UE in comparison with other countries, I think uh, uh, UE is a, a leader uh, without any uh, doubt. Uh, I think uh, UE started uh, since 2010 with the first project with CSP, uh, where the costs uh, were very high, and that uh, was, I think, uh, uh, a very uh, interesting signal uh, uh, to uh, you know um, uh, show that is feasible, that uh, is, is realable, and we can go forward with uh, with, uh, with renewables. Now, with the introduction with. Uh, uh, of more uh, solar uh, uh, plants. I think uh, the most important challenge at this time is the, the variability of, of solar energy. Uh, they think a lot of people, they are trying to convince people that we can go with 100% of renewables. I think we have to uh, check uh, 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 the, the grid, the, 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 the capacity of the grid, and we have to improve a lot our grids in, in, in our countries. That is, I think, one of the priority. When, with, with time, with uh, the introduction of more and more solar, I think we can use also the, the smart uh, grids that can uh, also uh, imp uh, uh, add the efficiency uh, of our systems and also uh, the, the reliability and also uh, have uh, uh, flexibility also for uh, managing uh, uh, our uh, different uh, kind of sources. The second one is, as uh, it was mentioned by uh, my predecessor, is the local content. I think it's, it's very important. Uh, we cannot rely in one or two producers in the, in the, in the, in the, in the world, unfortunately. And as I, I said in many times, we have to 
to to um, uh, to uh, to see how we can you know uh, uh, have you know a, a regional strategy on local manufacturing I have a, a kind of regional hub a technology hub and the market is there it's not it's not a matter of uh, the, the, the the size of the market in, in, in integrating you know more than six or seven eight countries that can be very interesting for uh, investors. And the other side, yes, uh, definitely the government has also to, uh, to set up some uh, uh, attractive conditions, you know, to attract uh, uh, investors. Local content is, uh, I'm seeing, just a second uh, challenge in the future. With respect to UAE, what I feel that challenges they do, I love challenges. They are the first to have the one of the biggest uh, solar pl PV plant in operation in Abu Dhabi. So the new challenges which are coming up uh, with the lower tariff, uh, putting the pressure for the developer to win the project, then coming back to the EPC. From EPC, it goes back to the suppliers. So this year, the entire supply chain has uh, like uh, felt the heat of uh, the pricing pressure. So most probably things should be better and developers and the government uh, policy makers should understand what is happening in the market, the raw material prices, uh, the inflation. So they are looking into more better policies in place with better tariffs and control so that it doesn't uh, hurt any industry, whether it is a UPC industry or a supplier industry. So looking forward for the new policies, what uh, the government will be implementing soon. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I think uh, the discussion has, you know, opened up few more challenges for the panelists, I would say. So there is a trilemma I, I could understand between, you know, suppliers, customers, and most importantly, people who are there in the company, the talent. So there are three expectations which has to be met right in each each of the companies or organization or you know whatever developers we can have so question to everyone again i will start with mr dinesh first here so so there is a trilemma considering you know whatever is happening globally the price volatility and you know geopolitical crisis so definitely between suppliers customers and your talent because everyone is under pressure right now suppliers to supply at the cheapest cost. Customer who is expecting the lowest tariff wherever has been announced, let's say one cent, I want below one cent now. And definitely the talent who is, you know, there in the market looking to work for, you know, developers and companies like you and they have some expectations. So how are you able to manage these three? I would like to, you know, each, every one of you to, you know, work on these three and you know, give the audience an appropriate answer uh, because everyone would be looking to, you know, have this kind of an answer. Uh, that's a good question, what you had asked. So, see, no, no entity is independent. All are interdependent. Okay, no uh, developer can be the best without a supplier or neither an EPC. So, all are independent. Every, uh, the developer should understand, put himself in the supplier's shoes. Like, what is the cost which he can come down to? or the EPC which they can come down to. So if there are too much cost cutting here and there, there will be problems for the developer in the longer run because the PPAs are being signed for pretty long duration. So you have to be very careful in what you are selecting the product because five years down the lane, there might be some problems or some issues which is gonna hit back. So all are inter it should always be a win-win situation, not only a developer focused or a talent focused or someone, a supplier focused. That's it. But, I would like to but I would also like to understand how are you able to manage this? I mean, yes, this, there is a challenge, but how are you managing this? See, you, you have not touched upon the talent. <laughs> See, in this case, what I will say is like, uh, the people should uh, first of all understand how the developers are. Like, okay, don't go only for a ta tariff, tariff, tariff. You have to understand the raw material involved, some costing has to be done, the cost involved in manufacturing a product, a module manufacturer, he just don't manufactures a module. 
he has to look into the raw material pricing. What is the pricing in the market? If the pricing goes up, he cannot sell it at a loss. The same thing goes with inverter, transformer as well. And of course, when an EPC is involved, there are design charges, many other costs involved. So all things have to be looked. I think my friend Mr. Manish can tell about the financing cost is in this part pretty much. So that's it. Well, uh, from a developer point of view, I, I can understand my colleague <laughs> really well, but uh, you know that uh, sometimes developers are putting pressure on, on suppliers. I guess you are doing the same with uh, raw material suppliers. Uh, so to mitigate this kind of pressure on, on um, EPC contractors, uh, suppliers, that's what I said before. I mean, we, uh, we, we have to do that, uh, the governments um, uh, of takers understand what is the current situation. So I think uh, in the coming years, we are not going to see any more the same uh, tariff than two, three years ago. So they have to understand that. And the, the, the final price is going to be higher for sure. But it's, again, it's, it's not only impacting in the, in the renewal sector, it's a global impact uh, worldwide. My two cents on this, see every developer when you are in a competitive bid, you have to beat the best. And you can't beat the best with uh, very conservative assumptions. So it's a game theory, all have to play their best. They have to ensure that the most efficient Suppliers are your partners who are willing to walk a tough path. Those who have a clear path of cost down curve. So a lot of calls need to be taken at the time of bidding. Some work in your favor, some don't work in your own favor, and that's the game. And that's how we call it, this is a risky investment. You have a return expectation, which is, which is correlated to the risk that you are taking. And then once you win, the, it's the ability of the management, how well they manage those risks and those assumptions. Okay, look, just to give you some perspectives, as Siraj, we are a developer and we have a number of clients, in fact, a large number. So from the client perspective, we found that ultimately being competitive and providing a credible alternative is the key. Now, building that required internal competencies to be built up. So being vertically integrated, we are a 100 plus stream now. So that helped us because the dependence on other contractors came down. Same way if you see on the supply chain side of it, what we did was we focused on long-term partnerships with a few players. Almost 90% of our projects are with a few selected vendors. So ultimately, having this ripple effect move down the chain up to the client, you know, and meeting their expectations has worked for us. Yeah, I mean, a uh, lot of things have been said already. Um, yeah, all, all stakeholders, uh, like all person involved, should should understand the the the, the, the current situation. Um, after allocation of risk is to as well, like I agree, is to be looked at. Um, for me, when I look at it, you know, I'm one thing that we need to to look at as well is to not like have a you know this race to go down the price and the cost and put more risk on projects and then having projects that uh, uh, have a low quality standards or stuff like that so i think it's uh, something that needs to be looked at as well uh, after to to have a okay competitive price in this uh, uh, yeah, like a partnership, uh, scalability on the few years, uh, I don't know, like, uh, oh, you have to wait a bit, so. <laughs> but, okay. Yeah. 